Hello everyone and welcome back to IMO Reviews. It's lights out and away we go at Netflix with Formula One Drive to Survive Season 5. We discuss seasons 1 to 3 and season 4 all in one big catch up video this time last year. Let's avoid another big catch up video and just do season 5 now shall we? Starting with the positives and I do have to repeat myself it's still filmed fantastically as always. I loved the addition of the helmet can again it added to that sense of putting you in the driver's seat and I'm all for that it's just electrifying to see it and feel like you're doing it even though you're not. It's all great drama again, isn't it? I totally get why people love this sport. It's like a soap opera. He doesn't like him because he thinks they cheated last year. And this guy's a hothead and he had a huge fight with him last year, but now he's coming back. You can't help but slip into it and just revel in the drama. It's not even really about the cars, to be honest. Now, last season, I thought they did a great job of establishing how hard it is to be a driver how much is being asked of you as a driver, both mentally and physically, how hard it is to get into the top level of the sport, and how hard it is to stay at the top level of the sport. And I appreciate that this season they still looked at those aspects, but they actually decided, okay, no, we looked at that last year, we're going to look at other avenues of what this sport has to offer. Seeing a lot more of the business aspect of things here, contract details, changing drivers, changing sponsorships, understanding driver strategies, and who's going to be the leader of the pack who's going to be there at the back to defend sometimes they get it wrong what went wrong how do they do it better next time and i thought that was fascinating it's a busy juggling act of maintaining or improving performance and morale through the smallest of details as someone who plays a lot of football manager i can always relate to that the racing was entertaining as ever the crashes were brutal as ever this show does really pack a punch in the entertainment value if you're a racing fan or not. And this is no disrespect to Wolf or Horner or Verstappen or Hamilton, but I'm glad that they didn't really focus on them anywhere near as much as they did last year. I feel like they got more than enough time to shine last year, and there are more characters in this sport. Let's go talk to those guys. It was great to see more of and get a better understanding of this guy called Charles Leclerc as a layman of this sport. I've heard of him. I hear everyone's talking about him, but why? What's so good about him? Well, now I know. Now I've got to really experience the guy, see what he can do, see what upsets him, what motivates him, and it was interesting. And it did widen my eyes to the idea of seeing more than just Hamilton versus Verstappen all the time. And I think that sport needs that. I think every sport needs that. It's so boring when it's just this guy or that guy or just always this one person. It's exciting to see all these new youngsters coming through with a lot of potential for the future. And again, as a layman, I thought they did a fantastic job of explaining the mechanical aspects here. Coming across issues like porpoising, which is something I've never heard of until now, but because of their good explanation and their solid work here, I very quickly understood what was happening, what was going wrong, and why. But I do have a handful of complaints, unfortunately. I didn't always love the narrative structure of this season. It seemed to be rushing and then dragging and then rushing again and then dragging, and it did make it hard to follow it and stay with it as to where we are, where we're going. In one of the earlier episodes, one minute it was pre-season, and then I looked at my phone for like two seconds to answer a text. I looked up and suddenly it was saying it was race eight, and it was like, wait, what? Hang on. Hang on. We just like jumped all the way this far ahead. What? Then at a late episode, a race that's already happened gets replayed, but through a different driver's perspective. I didn't pick up on that initially. I started to think my Netflix was playing up and it had gone back three episodes and was playing that episode again. Nope, it's just a different perspective of the same thing with very little setup to let you know that's what's happening. Unless you're a big F1 fan and you can recognize all of these tracks, the time, the date, who's where, what's on the grid... Yeah, that's going to be confusing, because it just looks like, hang on, I've already seen this once. And it's annoying that they did that and jumbled it. It made it hard to understand who was winning, when they were winning, if it was tight or not. It didn't really feel like there was a narrative of two drivers going back and forth competing for this championship. Only ever in fleeting moments, really. I do think some of the drama this season was definitely put on for the cameras to sell that drama and to get you to come back. Those little stingers at the end of each episode really do work a treat on you to just 
keep clicking next episode. It's not much of a spoiler, but there is an argument between two of the owners early on in the season, and it just made me cringe at how much it felt like it was being put on for the cameras. You could almost feel that the director had gone in the room beforehand and said, okay, big argument, you hate him, you hate him, angry faces, go. Yeah, let's not do that, Netflix. The idea is to be a fly on the wall. Natural drama is always more interesting than forced drama. So I'm going to give Formula One Drive to Survive Season 5 an 8 out of 10. It's another great season that's well worth the watch, but not quite as good as the last, if you're asking me. And that could well be because last season was genuinely insane. But that being said, its huge differences and lack of reliance on the last season is actually what was so great about it. Maybe it was just unlucky in not being as crazy a season as it was last year, and that's just real life. What can you do? <laughs> but I recommended the show back then, and I'm still recommending it now. Thank you for watching this review. Please be sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And please do hit the comment section as well. Have you seen Formula One Drive to Survive Season 5? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, if you haven't had enough of the crazy ginger, you can always click on these suggested videos right here and get yourself lost in an IMO wormhole. But if not, take care, and I look forward to seeing you on the next review.